YouTube, my name is Jeff and today I'm going to be talking about my homemade fletching jig. Now there's plenty of uh, fletching jigs out there on the internet but I don't think there's any with the quite my spin on it, forgive the pun. As you can see it's pretty standard uh, as in it's got uh, two uprights with a slot there that allows a, a clamp to place a feather on the arrow. Uh, the main difference here is the fact that my jig uses um, little plugins, if you like, little plugs that hold the arrow perfectly central to the axis of the arrow and allows you, using this dial, to turn the arrow, which controls the knock and therefore turns the arrow, allowing you to precisely place the feather where you like. Now, to remove the arrow, you just remove one of the plugs, remove the plug from the other end there, which is holding knock and you can have a bit fiddly because I'm trying to do it with a camera at the same time so I'm going to pull it through there you go just smoothing out the feathers and pull it through the hole that we've made in the jig and that's pretty much it uh, not very complicated I know but it works a treat it really does and this jig also allows me to offset the feathers slightly you can have straight or offset it's up to you let me just talk you through the jig if it wasn't very clear so using one of these plugs, we place the arrow into the plug. The little hole in the plug holds the arrow perfectly snug. It's, it's just a snug fit, it's not too tight. So we insert it onto the arrow and we insert that into the jig. Now this one here actually goes onto the knock. It holds itself perfectly onto the knock and that controls the spin of the arrow in the jig. So you place the whole thing into the jig and there you go. And this dial, as I say, you can use that that set for the cock feather there. So zero would be where I'd place the cock feather. But by turning the dial, I can place a feather anywhere. And like this one here is for the right end. And I've also got a setting for the left end. Simple as that. Just by spinning that dial. Now this, of course, you've seen done on other jigs. It's just a clamp coming down with the feather in it. And there's a bit of adhesive or glue, whatever you want, on that. I use tape. Now you can see it's a plastic clamp, I'll come back to that in a minute, which holds the feather and it literally just presses down onto the arrow until the adhesive grips. Here you can see it's out, it's down, it's in place, slight bit of pressure, pull the plastic bit back and there you go, one arrow completed. Now if you're interested in making this jig, I'm going to run through that quickly now. It's not going to be a blow by blow, but there should be enough instructions here for you to see what's happening so where do we begin here we've got some dimensions i say these don't have to be exact it's up to you what size jig you do but this jig will take anything for about a size 7 feather i think roughly and that's big enough for me but you can see the dimensions i've put there see how good they are for you now this is the plastic clip critical for the whole thing now i cannot take credit for this plastic clamp um, it comes really from Backyard Bowyer, fantastic guy, do look him up on uh, YouTube, Backyard Bowyer, and you just take some ordinary PVC pipe, if you're a UK guy, uh, you're going to be looking for the hard plastic solvent adhesive stuff, if you're in America, I think it's called Schedule 40, you guys have got there, well, you just heat the pipe up until it gets nice and soft, Watch it, it's very, very hot. I'm just using an ordinary paint, gun, uh, paint stripping gun, air gun, whatever you want to call them. And then we take it, we place it in the clamp, and we squash it completely flat. After a while, it's cooled down. As you can see, I'm just removing the clamp now. It's cooled down two, three minutes. That's all it needs. And what you actually end up with is a piece of plastic that's completely flat. And here we go, completely flat. Now what we have to do is we want to turn this into a clamp to hold the feather, so we need to just slice off the bottom edge, just as much as you want, you can, this clamp can be as deep as you want really, but slice off the bottom edge and sand it down. Now the only problem is of course it's going to be completely flat, so what I thought is it's not going to hold my feather, it's too flat. So I just reheated it gently until I just saw the plastic start to open. I inserted a couple of pieces of cardboard, clamped it up again, and then it was perfect to hold the feathers in place. Now, here you can see the bits of wood, 
shortcut ready to use. And here you can see that I've run the two upper right across in table saw to get a slot. And that slot's perfect size to hold the clamp. Here I'm making the plugs. I'm using a hole saw. Now I just happen to have a collection of hole saws and spade bits and I noticed what size plug would fit into what size hole if you like. Now that doesn't make sense. Here you go. You can see the piece of wood that comes out of the hole saw and that fits perfectly into this hole that's in a little bit of scrap wood. I've just tested that's a 32mm hole in my case. Again, the hole is up to you. It's just the fact that the, the plug and the hole correspond perfectly. It can be slightly loose, just put a bit of tape around it or something. And again, you can see that the uprights are in, here the uprights rather, I've drilled them uh, into where the slots are and just checking that everything fits there, which it does, thankfully. In fact, I'm a bit preoccupied with putting that wood in the hole, which might say something there. Uh, all the amateur psychologists will make what you like out of that. Um, but there you go, here it is all put together and there's the clamp in place, which as I say, go right up and down those slots nicely. And again, I'm putting the plug in the hole to fit wood in. Now then, um, where you have your feather, that's quite important. So what you need to do here, um, I like to have the feather a good inch and a half away from the knock point because I can take big fat thick fingers, I suppose. So by marking on the plastic clamp, well, first of all, I put a bit of tape on the arrow to say where I want the feather to fit in. Then I mark it on the plastic clamp, and then I just make a little hole in the clamp, just so I can see the point where my feather's going to come to an end. So I place the feather inside the clamp, right up till that point there, which I think you can see a little more clearly here. There you go, you can see the feather inside the clamp, and you can see that it's right up to that point. Now, this clamp is very important, as I say. The, the main credit for it does go to Backyard Bow, without a doubt. Um, the only difference is I've done here is if you want your feather to go on nice and straight, then fine, just leave this clamp alone. For me, I wanted a bit of offset, so you can see I've put a little piece of plastic on opposite ends and so there's a little piece on one end and there's a little piece on the opposite end and that allows me to have a slight offset it, well it's only a matter of millimeters but it does make a nice difference and it lets the arrow sit inside the jig and lets the the fletching so the feather have a nice right offset in my case right or left it's up to you what did i say there you go you can see i've got a nice right offset there whether you use that or not, that's up to you, it really doesn't matter. So here we're going to make the, the knocking ends. Now, as I say, so you can see there's the knocking point. Place into the jig. Place, now this is a nice, another hole saw, a nice big round piece of wood. And a bit of plastic, which I've put in place. Now it's not glued into the knock, but it is now glued onto that piece of round wood. I've put a couple more supports on, just to hold that piece of plastic in place. And now the whole thing will work as a nice dial. I've put some markings on there so that I can do my angles. And there we go. We have ourselves a finished jig. As you see, turn that and it spins the arrow, which is exactly what we wanted to do. We can then use the clamp to place the feathers anywhere on there. So you can have three feathers, four feathers, two feathers, whatever combinations you like. It's down to you. Now I hope all this made sense to you, uh, just a couple more points of clarity. Obviously the arrows I'm using here are target arrows, I think they're using broad heads or something like that. I think I haven't got a chance of using this particular jig. Um, also the plugs that are used, the centre hole in each plug obviously matches the diameter of the arrow. So. If you use more than one set of arrow, I've got a couple on the go, then you'll need more than one set of plugs. Each plug has to snugly hold the arrow, not too tight, just enough to hold it nice and steady without letting it rack. Now, when you drill your holes into the uprights, the big ones, and your plugs go in, if it's too loose, then just try putting a little bit of tape on it, a little bit of 
uh, electrician's tape or a tele tape, something like that, just to hold it on nice and snug. As I say, it needs to be able to move freely, but at the same time, not rattle. And that's it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I can't pretend I'm an expert archer, far from it. I just like throwing the odd arrow around in my back garden. But I hope this little jig might be of use to you. Thanks for watching.